I was requested to make a top five budget decks for this video, so smash the button and crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more excellent content like this baby. Uh, from what I've gathered from Zodiac, there were some very interesting opinions. Now remember, budget is very subjective. Uh, budget can be anywhere from five to three hundred dollars. It's weird, but we're gonna try to kind of go in between here and look at all these different price tags. So let's dig on into this bad boy, shall we? The first one for our list here is actually going to be Crusadia. Now, originally we, we've looked at Crusadia, I think, every one of these lists, and the big thing with this deck is you're playing a going second deck that kind of is ignorant to what your opponent does. Uh, I love using the word ignorant there because you just hand them a kaiju, uh, a couple kaijus, uh, you interrupt, or interrupt a kaiju slumber them, uh, and then you start Crusadia combo. Uh, downside here is uh, you're really, 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 really fragile to hand traps. Um, if anything happens to you mid-combo, well, you're picking your cards up and you're walking away. It, it's, it's the unfortunate downside of things. I wish I could be more positive and be like, yeah, like, this deck is really awesome. Like, it's the best. No, but in terms of budget option, Equimaxes aren't very expensive. Uh, Pot of Prosperity w would help the deck. Uh, typically, you're probably going to look towards like Desire um, to kind of flourish out the deck a little bit more. Um, in terms of generalized engine, uh, I can't think of anything too crazy off the top of my head. It's just you strap on your helmet, normal summon Crusadian monster. If your opponent interrupts you, there's not really much you can do about it. Uh, the most expensive thing will be having to get kaijus. Um, you can rearrange and get different kinds of kaijus. Obviously, like Godaro is probably going to be the one you want to you're going to want to get for today's format. Um, all things considered, though. Um, you don't have to play Godarla, but if you're attempting to win without Godarla in your Tri Brigade matchup, you're paying for that price tag for the ability to play through the barrier statue. So, something a little bit more simplistic, build the link board, OTK your opponent on the cheap side of things, it's not a bad deck whatsoever. Also, Avermax is a really good boss monster, who would have guessed? Number two on our list here is Kubix, or Kubix. Now, Cubix just smashed through the last, what was extravaganza, getting 13th place. And we've, we've looked at Cubix on market watches, and I'll be honest with you guys, um, the deck is very cheap. All right, well, obviously, like, if you want to play draw power or other things or more spicy tech choices, then obviously you can build on those. But if you're working on a very cheap budget and you're like, well... I kind of like what Cubix can do. I, I kind of like the mentality of how this deck can develop, how these boards can make. Uh, having a 3k body on the field, that literally is super ineffective, and I just, you know, got to dedicate, what, three names and one in my hand to essentially start my combo. It's pretty straightforward at the end of the day what you really want to do with Cubix. Um, I think the whole Cubic core cost a whole whopping $30, all right? And to have something that's borderline tier three that can go into tier two and can even bully tier one, eh, granted, not all the time, but some of the time, is really what you're looking for, correct? Um, so, I mean, hey guys, if you really want to start somewhere, look at Cubics, because you can build on the Cubic strategy. That's why I said, like, you could start to pick up draw cards. Uh, you, you want hand traps for your side deck or something like that? Sure, you can pick them up as you're playing this deck, stealing free wins, and just capitalizing on, well, what your deck wants to do. Bully with Big Cubic Guy. Um, there will be some hands where, you know, things will be really bad for you, I'll be honest with you. But, honestly, you can play through some of those hands. It all just depends on what your opponent set up on a board, blah, 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 blah. So, eh, strange concept, I know, but just got to break their board, five head. Next up is Earth Machine. Now, I was, I was thinking about this, I'm like, is this deck really budget? And the biggest thing I can come to is pretty much, yeah. So, you need, what, three Metal Cruncher... I think which is like four bucks a piece. Uh, the Infinitrack engine is a couple of bucks, depending. 
Um, I think you need one Machina Citadel and or Fortress, depending on how you want to build the deck. So right off the bat there, you're not in such a bad place. Uh, Gustav and Juggernaut aren't that expensive either. Like, if you really want to get fancy, you can get, like, a Lost Art or something along the way. But, like, that's not even that expensive as it is. And then, like, I guess Heavy Forwards are a couple of dollars. And then Torrentials are kind of expensive. And then I guess your next thing is, like, do you want to play Ash Blossoms or some sort of hand trap for that? But your whole extra deck, like, Zeus is optional. You don't need to play Zeus. All right? It, it helps, yes, but you can deal without it. That's not a problem. Also, like, your big go-to is, like, Inner Blafineer, which is cheap. Um, Dingrisu, which is cheap. But looking at, like, this deck, like, Ash Blossom, Nibiru's are just your basic staples. If you want to play without those, you can just play the whole Machina combo package and still get the same thing, because Mr. Gustav, Dora, Juggernaut, Libby, they're not that expensive anymore. All right, And those combo pieces will essentially, yes, push you to break those boards and devastate the opponent, but at the end of the day, everything else is pennies on the dollar. I, oh yeah, I guess Machina Redeployment's a couple dollars too, so, for the Fortress package. So, that's a thing, but that, that's not that bad at all, alright? This deck is definitely budget tier for what you want. Number four on the list here, I'm, I'm gonna put Virtual World here. Now, hear me out here. So, there's the Triple Lulus that you need. Um, I, some builds were playing Extrav. Now, the reason why I bring this up is... You can play the Money Mud Dragon package. You can try to make Dragoons. I don't... For budgetary purposes, you don't have to play Dragoons. Uh, there's, like, cheesy FTK loops that you can do with it. You can Gotham's loop your opponent's hand. It's things that you can do. Now, you're kind of moving up the tier ladder here with the Virtual World, and... I don't think the virtual world's a super good call um, in terms of budgetary purposes, but if you're looking at like tier two, you're like, all right, so I want to use this as a stepping stone, kind of start stepping into other meta. It's not a bad place. Also, if you're in one of those players that had virtual world during the last purge of a ban list, um, you didn't really lose anything in terms of like having an unplayable deck. You just have to adjust a couple cards, um, pick some other tech choices, decide if you want to play the Gotham's Loop, which, by the way, is kind of inconsistent, but players love to do it. So you just, you kind of pick your poison at this point in time with this. So it's a little bit more expensive. It's not as consistent. Honestly, I would probably look at learning Earth Machine combos or going with Cubics before I would pick up Virtual World at this point. But if you're somebody that played Virtual World previously, you already had the core, or if your friend's got a cheap core, it's not a half bad option to step into being like, hey, you know what? We'll give this a shot. This looks like something I might enjoy. And I mean, Chuchi interruptions are one of the best things in the game. Especially when you got a little smug shit face on look on your face and you're like, hee hee hee, what are you gonna do about my Chuchi? Alright, then the last one here is still Prank Kids. Prank Kids has been the budget definition of, well, budget for how long now at this point in time? So what places are 20 bucks? So that's eh, 60 bucks plus all your one ofs, dough doodles you need two of. Um, I think we were doing math and we were we were coming up to like one to one thirty. You can pretty much get everything that you need for praying kids, and then you just got to decide of do I want to play dark rule no mores? Um, do I want to like tech things out? Do I want to play like going second weirdness with like evenlies? Um, do I want to hand trap out and play like Nibiru's and Ash Blossoms? <sighs> It's affordable, man. All right? Like, obviously, some builds play access code. And that's a story for another day. But Praying Kids is pretty freaking cheap, all things considered, for budgetary options. Like, be honest with me here. Like, 200 bucks for a Tier 1 deck? It's not bad. I mean, obviously, like, you got things like dinosaurs over here, but double animadored arches or prosperities just made me go limp from ever considering picking that up as a budget option. I mean, yeah, you could play one, but eh, I'd rather just go with praying kids 
and then just start building what there. Just take a basic brain kit score, just start winning five head, you know, start farming that store credit, start getting those OTS packs. Oh, I pulled an ultimate, go sell it for a couple hundred dollars and just build from there. So what do you guys think? Please leave a comment down below, smash the ever living crap out of the subscribe button, tell me what you guys think about these top five budget decks. I'll see your beautiful faces back here later on in the day for some more cool awesome content. Peace. Thank you, patrons, for making the ride never truly end without you guys' support. Well, I would probably be doing Truffle Shuffle videos for a living. Guys, please check out VanCole 40 for all of your Card Fight Vanguard content brought to you by MCO40. And if you are looking to pick up singles, check out MCOGames.com for your trading card game needs. Thanks for watching, everybody.